Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Explore Traveler podcast, your host, John Gentry. And today, I just wanted to kind of bring up five different travel-based skills that I personally have learned over the decades that have made me, I would say, an all-around better person at whatever I am doing. And traveling is not just about going internationally or out of your state or out of your city. It's about a sense of exploration. And so that sense of exploration and wonder and adventure that uh, those of us who do this and myself, and there's a lot of people that enjoy this, sometimes you can enjoy the moment, even if you're in the middle of the city, just exploring a new city block sometimes is, is very interesting. Um, I enjoy taking videos, I enjoy doing photography, I enjoy writing about what I'm seeing. And so and I enjoy sharing that with all of you, the audience, whether it's, you know, all of you on Facebook or YouTube or via the website or the podcast, whatever that may be. So, so I came up with just five basic skills that are they kind of sound generalistic in nature, but they have allowed me to broaden my mindset. And one of those is when I have traveled, it allows me to learn from my surroundings. And so what do I mean by that? So let's say I'm in a foreign country. I'm learning culture. I'm learning language. I love to ask questions of people. Uh, I try to learn their language and ask those questions in their language if possible. Well, But sometimes I do speak English to foreigners and they speak English back and I get a lot of interesting um, comments and I just learn more about people, people internationally. I learn about the surroundings of where I'm at, even if it's just a national park. Um, I pay attention to nature and by learning from my surroundings, I get a sense of peace and understanding that I might not have had if I just was just focusing on my little area where I live, where I'm from, and I never kind of got out and gone anywhere. And so that's what I mean from learning from my surroundings. Uh, another item that I have written down here is outdoor skills, right? So every time I learn an outdoor skill, I build upon it and I learn a new skill. For example, uh, people, I think, take for granted the ability to just make fire. It sounds so simple, right? I want to make fire. <coughs> Maybe you're going to use a match. Maybe you're going to use a lighter. Well, what if you don't have those two things, right? Are you going to be able to use a flint and steel? Are you going to be able to do experiments where you, you know, rub sticks together until you get enough heat or coal in order to make fire? It's, it, it sounds so simplistic, but, you know, making fire without modern day appliances is obviously more difficult than one may think. There's, there's things that you could do to make fire you know, using batteries and wires and steel wool, the experiments can go on. So that's kind of what I mean by outdoor skills and building upon those outdoor skills. Um, for example, reading the map. I don't, I mean, I was in the military, so reading maps was just something that uh, we were required to do on a very regular basis. But I don't know. I mean, do people that go to the university these days, do they even learn how to read a map? Do they understand what the lines on a map mean? Can they follow, you know, longitude and latitude? These are just different skills that you learn when you're traveling. Because you can't always just rely on your smartphone. Sometimes you need to be able to just use an old-fashioned map. You're in a cool area, you're on a cool hiking trail, and maybe you're thirsty and you want to go get some water and purify it and drink it. 
sounds simple, but you do need to know how to use a map. So learn an outdoor skill and build upon that outdoor skill into learning new skills, right? So every time you do something, you're learning. Every time you learn something new, it leads to something else. And that's what I mean by outdoor skills and build upon each new skill. So one of the things you get from travel, I think, is you do get more exercise. So it's a certain amount of physical health that you get from that. And physical health can be, it could be muscle tone or weight loss or those kinds of things. But it also gives you a general, I, I call it, uh, what's where I'm looking for, maybe virus protection health. So when I travel a lot, I'm around a lot more people. And as the times go on, I'm exposed to many different variations of colds and flus and different viruses. And so now that I'm older and I've had all this exposure, I I honestly don't get sick very often. And usually if I do, it's like food poisoning, right? That's another story for another day. But sometimes uh, (laughs) food poisoning can be very uncomfortable. If you've had it, you know what I'm talking about. And I think more important than even physical health is mental health. That's something we cannot take for granted. And sometimes mental health can be as simple as looking out over a distance and looking at the clouds moving across a beautiful mountain, enjoying that moment and relaxing Allowing your mind to just kind of recharge, especially these days, there's just so much propaganda that's happening in every facet of our lives. It's it's kind of hit an all time high. So I think mental health is way more important now, and, it, and that includes anyone. I don't care if you're in China or India or United States or Philippines. You need your own mental health, your own sense of well being. And so travel can help you with that. And so just maybe travel out to a park or travel out to a national park in your own country. Or, you know, just think of some place different that you want to go to where you can just get a little bit of quiet, a little bit of peace of mind. And so make sure to not just think about always doing something sometimes just taking a deep breath breathing in some fresh air and enjoying the quiet that's what i mean by mental health Uh, i think the the fifth thing today i want to just talk about real quick is the the ability to adapt to new surroundings and situations if you're traveling hiking camping going somewhere internationally driving somewhere domestically You're being exposed to different people, different places, different environments. That is keeping your mind mentally sharp. That is allowing you to be able to, um, it's allowing you to be able to handle new situations. And every time you're exposed to something new, you're that much more stronger, right? Right. You have, it's it's a form of information. So just kind of think of it like you're picking up on data, right? If you think of it just from a data mindset, <clears throat> everything you see, everything you touch, everything you hear is a form of sensory perception. Your mind is learning from all of that. The more you travel, the more you learn. And so... One of the reasons why I can go anywhere and do any kind of a, you know, job within my particular career field is because I've, I've exposed myself to travel so much that I feel comfortable now. So I think to some people, they might feel nervous because it's new, it's, you know, it's change and it makes them feel uncomfortable. Now for me, it's new, it's exciting, and it's enjoyable. 
uh, that uncomfortable feeling that I might have had, say, 30 years ago, that's long past. I enjoy going to someplace new. I enjoy going, you know, just looking at something different. Maybe it's just a simple statue or whatever. And then I look for the plaque and I learn something, you know, maybe I learn a little historical tip. Or maybe I'm hiking out in the middle of nowhere and I find a, a, an archaeological site, right? And it's got some information there about it. Or maybe I'm looking at a map and I notice, huh, there's something of interest. If there's a historical marker one mile away, let me go hike to this offshoot trail and, and see what's over there. And so you're always learning something. You're always doing something. And you're exposing yourself to new things, new people, new places, new cultures, uh, the past. And it helps you with the future, right? Makes you stronger. And so I, I, I just I thought of these five skills that I've picked up via traveling. And I thought maybe I'd just kind of address it today. And And I think it probably came to my mind because of all of the stuff I'm hearing on the radio and the TV and I just feel like everyone is being bombarded and distracted and they need to uh, take a break, you know, get out, do something different, turn off the, turn off that radio or the TV and just go do something. Don't let these people control you. And I think you can decide what's best for your life because it is your life. You do have to live it. And so you need to decide what's best for you. And what's best for you isn't always what's best for the next person. And that's okay. You're allowed to be an individual. Uh, so recently, I haven't concluded it, but I wanted to just mention that I have written the my latest article. It's on the website, exploretraveler.com. And it's basically the Bandelier National Monument. I've been going out there a couple times. Um, it's kind of a larger article. And so if you like photography and you like, you know, a little bit of video and some of my writings, you know, you'll see that I kind of wrote, made, you know, made some comments on each individual photo. And I, I, and I found some interesting things uh, from archaeological sites um i've got three different trails that's listed there there's more than three in the park but I, the article's already super big and didn't want to bore everybody i just found it super interesting so i i've managed to already write over two thousand words but i think i'm going to add a couple more photos to it and i have some video from the falls trail that i think i want to put together and I'll put that, of course, in the article as well. And this Bandelier National Monument, National Park, whatever you want to call it, um, it's kind of the article. It's kind of up there with my petroglyph article that I did recently, so it's quite big. I've started to just write longer articles. I've been picking sites that have lots of different locations to them, and I've been exploring them and learning some new historical facts and data and i think that's what kind of led me to these five you know travel tip skills so take a look at that article and make sure to you know share it on facebook or twitter or um, your youtube what whatever you want you know whatever social media you like to use uh, i have uh my wife and i you know karen we we've, we've got tons and tons of photos and we will pull things out of our archives and we'll try to write more articles about different places. Uh, I wish we could just put it all on the website, right? Uh, we can't, of course. It's just so much. We have so much information. But we're going to continue, um, you know, telling you, the listener, the viewer, the reader, all of our different stories, all of the different places that we've gone to. And our goal is, is quite simple. We want you to consider maybe you don't go to that place but you learn something and uh, hopefully it inspires you to go somewhere yourself i'm very focused on national parks i think this year <coughs> probably next year as well 
as long as they're making traveling uh, internationally so inconvenient, I'm just going to keep doing national parks and some, I'll find some new unusual state parks. Uh, I mean, every once in a while, I find some really cool trails that you'd think people locally were all flocking to, but they aren't, right? So you, you, there's lots of different things to go to and see. There's national parks in some countries where people would never think of, uh, for example, Afghanistan's in the news, right, You know, because of what happened. But there's a, there's some really cool national park there that's, uh, I want to say it's west of, west of Kabul out in the middle of nowhere. It is just, I've seen some photos of it. It is amazing. I'd love to go look at that. So if I ever had an opportunity, I definitely would go there. The same thing goes with a lot of the parks, you know, the wilderness we've seen in the Philippines and Lete and a lot of the articles we showed you, the islands we've gone to and the underwater photos from our scuba dry, you know, scuba diving trips. You know, all this stuff it's, you know, it's very interesting and you can choose yourself where you're at. You just get out and do something. Um, you can unplug from your electronics or you can take your electronics with you. It doesn't really matter. If you take them with you, you can share the, you know, your exciting trip with other people. I think that's good. I think people need to see you enjoying life. So that, that's kind of the latest that's going on up on Explore Traveler website. You may notice that if you look on the top, it's a totally different layout, right? We've created like a destinations categories, and it's it's getting pretty well organized. Um, I've got to help somebody helping me kind of move things around, and we're creating category pages that I think is giving more visibility, and so we're we're noticing more some more you know traffic coming from search engines. I think a lot of it's Google, but I see Bing and DuckDuckGo and different things. So people are coming from different places. And the same, all the different channels brings in new people, right? And for example, you know, when I post this podcast, I'll put the link to the Bandelier article, you know, on there so you can see it, so people can find it. And let's see, what else is kind of new? So traveling. Uh, I mean, you still got to wear masks. I mean, we we're, we are flying domestically, mostly uh, between the Southwest United States and Alaska. We go up through Seattle a lot. Um, in the re in the next few weeks, I'm gonna be able to, I think, get some new content. I'm gonna kind of go out of the Southwest. I'm not sure which direction I'm gonna go. But uh, I'm going to hit a couple national parks en route to some other location that I'm heading to. And I'm going to try to look for some sites that aren't as popular but are just as exciting. Just so people have some new things, new places to think about and try to get some new ph photography. And I'll make, of course, I'm going to try to do a vi at least one video of each location. And if you've been following along, especially on the YouTube channel and Facebook, you'll notice that I'm doing reviews of like different products. You know, one of them is like dehydrated meals. Um, I think these days it's good to have some extra food on hand. And if you can use it for your adventures too, that's like, I don't know, it's just double the excitement. And sometimes the meals I have tasted, I'm not going to bash any particular brand but let's just say I had a meal not that long ago and I didn't quite enjoy it and my family found it was kind of amusing that uh, the, my choice of words kind of eluded that I wasn't enjoying the meal as much so that happens I mean it is I'm not gonna everything is not a favorite and you know sometimes I might taste a uh, vegetarian meal and I love it. And then I have another one and I absolutely hate it. Or I shouldn't say hate. Hate's a strong word. Have I ever hated anything? No. But has some things had less flavor than others? 
Absolutely. So, so just take a look at those videos. Um, they're short. They're only like five minutes in length. And I'll try to share. Every time I go out, I'll do a video. And, you know, so, I mean, I don't post consistently like every Friday. I mean, maybe I should do that. I think people, uh, my webmaster in general, I mean, he loves to tell me, oh, you should post on a, you know, on a schedule and, you know, space it out. But, you know, I'm a busy guy and sometimes I just want to share something. I'm in the mood and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to share this video on Facebook today. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to share the same video on YouTube or maybe I'll just share another video. I, I don't even share everything I capture. I capture a lot of pretty interesting things. So just take a look at our YouTube channel, our Facebook channel, and the website, of course, exploretraveler.com. Thank you for listening, and hopefully I'll see you out on the trails. Until next time, travel on, everyone. Mm-hmm.